Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Community Trail Running Podcast. I am your host, Adam Lee, and thank you for joining me once again. So many podcasts out there, and I so appreciate you spending a little bit of your time with me. Today's episode features Matt Chittam, the Running Rambler podcast host, but he's talking about Relay today. Relay is an entirely paywalled running content Patreon account with nine contributing members, including Matt. Very, very fun to hear about all that. We'll get to that very soon. Today I'm recording from Galliano Studios, staring across across the Trincomalee Strait at Salt Spring Island. It's not so bad. The only housekeeping we have is the Dear Abby Er Adam. Submit your questions, please. We're going to get answers to those from all the people who should be answering them. So excited for that. Get them in. Just so you know, October is going to be a little bit sporadic. We've got a vacation. It's Sheena's birthday. So look for posts, but just not quite as much. And I'm hoping you can tell a friend about community trail running on your next long run. Let them know how much you enjoy it. But today is about Matt. It's about Relay. Let's go. Today's guest is Matt Chittam of Relay. Matt is the host of the Rambling Runner podcast, which focuses on dedicated amateur runners, and Relay is a diverse team of running content creators. What makes Relay unique and what caught my eye is they are launching as a completely paid entity, putting out at least 20 pieces a month for 9 bucks US. The idea being subscriptions will take care of the revenue, so no advertising on top of that. Matt, thank you for taking the time today. My pleasure. I'm so excited to be here, Adam. I'm really excited as well. First question, super easy for you. Tell us a bit more about Relay, who's involved, what those 20 pieces are going to look like, because I know it's a blend of media. Yes, it is. And I think that's the whole point. Absolutely. Because, you know, you mentioned you gave a nice little brief description of what Relay is. What I view Relay is, is going to be the best place on the internet for running content. And that's how I view it. And when I say that, I'm talking about written pieces, audio, and video. Okay, so there's nine pieces, there's nine people, I should say, on the team. I am certainly one of them. So there's eight great people. And then there's also Matt Chittam. Uh, You have people like Marcus Brown, Carolyn Sue, Peter Bromka, Stephanie Flippin, Kara Goucher is on the team. I mean, it's it's just an august group, and it really is absolutely amazing. You got Zoe Rome on there. She's the managing editor of Women's Running. She's the editor in chief of Trail Runner Mag, which is, might be a, a you know a, a big thing for you and your team. We got Lindsay Hine on the team, Marcus Brown. We got an enormous group, and that's on purpose. It's great people, all people who have a history of content creation, who have. It's a very diverse group of people, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Not only in terms of maybe the you know the the first thing that comes to mind when you talk about diversity, but also diversity of experiences, uh, diversity of mediums that they put content out in, mm. right? And diversity of, of of thought and approach and points of view, and that was all very important to this because ultimately what we're trying to do, and my thesis is, is that when you have a great group of people coming together, one plus one equals five. In that from a content and collaboration perspective, this is what's going to make Relay unique. It already has in some of the content that's been put out there because oftentimes in running media, especially places that are trying to have the written pieces, the audio and the video, which frankly aren't that many, even some of the the heritage Mm -hmm. legacy brands aren't trying to do all three of those and they make their adamant about that, is that when you have that, oftentimes you can't employ people full-time in all these areas. So you often hire some you know, so some outside talent, right? People who are are making their money like on each piece, right? So you have mm-hmm. that sort of thing, and that's great. And I know a lot of those people, and I read their work. They're really good. I mean, I love the freelance economy, and I love these freelancers who are able to make a full time living off of it. The difference is they aren't part of a team. And I mm-hmm. think that when you create a team setting, the collaboration, the creativity that emanates from that ultimately makes the overall product that much better. And that's the that's the idea behind Relay. And, you know, it's, it's a part time gig for all of us. It's why we have a big team. And so we're putting out 20 pieces of content a month. We're really asking every member of the team to do at least to contribute to at least three pieces a month. And if they do that, then we're going to have at least 20 pieces of content a month, which also means that we're putting out a really high. That's that's a lot of pieces mm-hmm. a month right? that that competes with the legacy brands in terms of the, the, the amount of content getting put out on a monthly basis. And while at the same time, 
making it so it's not a full-time endeavor for everybody, which especially in the, in the, uh, in the beginning phase of this is necessary. Cause it's not like we're a full fledged business in the first, you know, the first 10 days after launch or anything like that. This is going to take a while uh, when it comes to that. But ultimately I have full confidence that we'll get there. You get the advantage, like you said, um, of having the team, but there's also then like the continuity for, for the consumer where you kind of get the narrative to keep that story going. You know, we get to kind of know you and know what we're coming back for. I can tell you're really proud and excited for what's coming. What made now the right time for this venture? Um, I think there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. I think there are the shifting landscape within media is pronounced and it's something that anyone who follows running media has been able to see from a mile away okay you have legacy brands that are being bought out by larger companies you have other legacy brands that are having layoffs you see this this gap in coverage right where you have legacy historical brands that haven't fully adapted to the new technology and new just the new media landscape and this is not and I'm not banging on these legacy brands. You're seeing this in every genre of media, not just running media. Okay, this is a widespread thing, right? You don't see you don't see newspaper companies like doing great right now. You know, so th this is this is a byproduct of the changing age. So you have that piece. The other side, you have basically the economy that I came from. You have these solopreneurs who are who are creating running content, but basically doing it as a one person shop, right? So you're talking about people like. Mario Fraioli, like Ali Feller, Jason Fitzgerald, people like that. And I was in that group as well. And, you know, that I made a, a good living on that. And I could have just kept going that way. But my thought was there is this there is a gaping hole here and it's going to be filled by companies that are going to embrace this three medium model and can do it without completely uploading all the upfront costs. So they have a longer runway for launch. And that's exactly what we're doing. It's why we've gone to, gone to a subscriber model uh, is one of the reasons. And also is one of the reasons why we have a big team so that it's not just three people who are putting in full-time hours and not getting full-time pay. And ultimately that would make it completely unsustainable. So uh, in terms of the, the timing of it, it basically became, okay, there's an open in the, opening in the market and it got to the point where within the running community, I thought we had reached a tipping point with Patreon. So we use Patreon and I use, we use Patreon for a very simple reason. It's basically paywall in a box. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we didn't need to create our own website and enough people had been, I guess, aware of Patreon where mm -hmm. we'd kind of reached a tipping point. Right. So it's like if you start Patreon five years ago, it's, it's much, the adoption rate is much less. Um, you know, there's still a segment of people who view Patreon as like, who, who use Patreon, I should say, from a creator standpoint as like a tip jar of sorts, almost like corporate philanthropy, right? Like, am I going to get people to like support me or support like March of Dimes? Like we don't, that's not, the, that's not our lane. We don't mm -hmm. want to be in that lane. Okay. It's more of like, all right, Patreon is to paywall content, what like Anchor is to creating a podcast, right? Or like what Blogger was to creating a blog, right? It's a way to easily engage with this thing without any technological resources and without any upfront costs. So that was the the easy thing for us, as opposed to say like putting in $15,000 to create our own website and then also having like a webmaster on call at all times to manage the paywall, to manage like the content, to manage everything that came with it. Now, there may come a time two or three years from now when we do sort of th that sort of thing, but our thought was like, hey, we don't need to do that right now. So let's not. And let's just go with it. Um, we've seen a lot of people have success with Patreon in the running community, right? You've seen Ethan Newberry. Basically, they're all, for all intents and purposes, been the trail and ultra world <laughs> who, mm -hmm. have, who really adopted Patreon in a fun and innovative way. There's other solopreneurs who use it as a, in the tip jar way, which I don't think is a sustainable business model, but it can be a supplementary income for some of those people. But I think that ultimately using Patreon as paywall in a box allows you to really, really kind of jumpstart this. And I think ultimately, um, you know, get you off on the right foot uh, from a business perspective. It's perfect. Everything you need in the little box, right? You can just plug and play, which is fantastic. How and the nice thing too, is that like they actually, so they send out an email every time you post a piece. So right? that was the night again, someone can, can turn off that notification obviously. And, and I've done that with, I, I like to support a lot of people on Patreon. And sometimes they turn off that notification, but it's kind of like you get almost get like a newsletter in a sense too, because they are alerted to this. It's not like 
you know, ESPN.com post something on the on their on their website. And sure, they're going to push it out on all the social social media channels. But there's not like an email goes out the exact moment you press publish. And that is an added benefit. I wouldn't say that's the reason we're on Patreon, but it, it certainly helps. Yeah, absolutely. How has reaction been since your first free week there and just in general? I think it's been really good. I think, you know, here's the thing. I didn't know what to expect. Right. Right. So I don't I don't know what to expect from a launch perspective. OK, so we are going to actually post. You know, and right now, um, the amount of patrons we have is hidden. So that's private. So that's a choice you can make on Patreon. You can make the revenue hidden and or you can make the amount of subscribers you have hidden. OK, so ultimately, before the end of the calendar year, uh, we are going to make that public. We base in Patreon basically advises people that in the first basically to treat their launch as a six week launch. So okay. they know better than us. So that's how we're doing it as well. Uh, and then we'll take it from there. Ultimately, here's the thing. I have full faith this is going to work for a very simple reason. The people on the team, right? It's like, ultimately, it's it's about the, high, the putting out high quality and consistent content. And if you can do that and you can let people know that it's there, ultimately, it's going to succeed, Okay. You just have to put it out there for long enough. Again, as long as you have the quantity and the quality. If you have both of those locked down and you're not hiding it, you're, you're letting people know all the time and all of the people on the team have a substantial audience, then I think it's just a matter of time until uh, it reaches kind of a critical, critical mass or if we're talking running terms, critical velocity uh, from that point on. I think you've kind of segued super easy for me here because i um... You know, the, the future is is tough to predict, but I think you just told me what you, the plan is. It's just put out awesome content all the time. Is that is that what like can you look far forward or is it just hammer out great content and keep doing it? You know, Adam, it's just like preparing for, you know, all the races that we prepare for as runners. Right. Like you can set your race calendar, you can set your goals and that's and that's great. But then you just have to zoom in to what am I doing today? Right. And also making sure that you're not judging yourself uh, on, on the day to day stuff. You're learning, you're doing your best. You're learning from any mistakes that you have. And also understanding that like good days don't come out of nowhere. Good days aren't flukes. OK, like you go out there and you run a, you know, a really hard 5K and you set a PR. There's no such thing as a magical race. OK, you can't run above your fitness level. Right. That is impossible. OK. You just maximized your potential or maximized your fitness on that day, right? And if you don't, you don't, and hopefully you learn from it. There's no different here, okay? We have goals, absolutely. But I have big goals. I want to be the best place on the internet for running content. I've already said it on this podcast, right? That's what I want to do, okay? And I know, I know we can get there because we have the team in place to do just that, okay? And so what, so what does that mean? Well, it means on the daily, making sure that people are putting out high levels of content and I don't have to micromanage these people. First of all, I'm not managing them at all. It's a collective and these people are doing great things. Secondly, it's making sure that we're continually trying to be as creative and collaborative as possible so that not only are we putting out high quality things, but hopefully we're putting out innovative things, impactful pieces that are a touchstone uh, for people. And so from a maybe an impactful standpoint, or if it's just an entertaining piece, that is highly entertaining, right? And it doesn't, doesn't this isn't necessarily like a college lecture all the time. Like it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. super serious content all the time. I think there's absolutely a place for that. And we're going to be putting out some very serious content. It's already in the works, but also... Sometimes people just want fun and entertainment and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. That's part of working in the media. And I think when we want to do those things, we want to make sure that we're just as creative in those endeavors. Tell us where people can follow and interact with you and yourself. Tell us where they can find out more about Relay. Give us, give us all the goods. Relay is housed at patreon.com forward slash Relay. So Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com forward slash Relay. All of Relay's social media handles are the same. It's just at relay underscore site, S-I-T-E. So relay underscore site. They're all the same on every channel. For me, I'm easy. I'm at rambling underscore runner. That's me. Um, so you can find the Rambling Runner podcast on all the podcast platforms. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find Relay on those same exact places. Amazing. Huge thank you to Matt Chittum. Huge thank you to all of you listening. Shout out to race volunteers everywhere. And until next time, I'm Adam Lee, and this is Community Trail Running. Yeah.